Hello everyone. Do you remember last week we left Peter in the middle of a story? He was just going off with some men from Joppa. Do you remember that? Maybe we'll remind you later on. But first of all, I've got a quiz for you. I want you to look at these four pictures of machines. And I wonder if you can tell me what sort of machines they are. Now, they're old, so I don't know. You might need to go and get your mums and dads to come and help you. They might well know exactly what the machines are. But you have a look. There are four things. The last one isn't exactly a machine, but I think you might know what sort of code it is. OK, have a look. OK, so I'm going to show you four pictures now of the things that these machines produced. So you have a look at those four pictures and then I'll tell you all about them. So have a look at the next four pictures. OK, so the first machine produced that first funny little long line and that's called a ticker tape machine. And the ticker tape machine used to sit in offices and you go tick, 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 tick. And you used to stamp out little messages that told people about well, stocks and shares. That would be in about the 1920s. So that's quite old. Now, the next one you'll see is something that taps out Morse code and Morse code was one of the first ways that people were able to send messages with a series of dots and dashes which is what that second picture was. Now the third one is a very interesting machine and your mums and dads might be able to tell you about it from their history lessons at school. That was called the Enigma machine. It was very famous in the Second World War because it was a coding machine that used to get lots and lots of very important messages. The enemy used to be able to send messages to one another and then somebody had to try and crack the code. And that machine was really, really difficult to crack the code for. And the last one, well, I think you know what that is, don't you? That scratch code. And believe it or not, that picture that I've got a scratch code, that is eventually going to make a Pokemon game with Squirtle. So that's what all those pictures add up to. What does that have to do with our Bible story? Well, sit down, relax, and I'll tell you. Are you ready? OK, so do you remember last week, Peter was just about to leave the house of Simon the Tan Tanner, who lived in Joppa, and travel somewhere else because three men had come to ask for him, to ask him to come with them to the person who'd sent them. And I said that the story that I was going to tell you this week began before the story of Peter going up onto the roof. And then it went on after Peter came down from the roof. So it's sort of it's like a wrap around of last week's story. So let's start at the very beginning, shall we? That's a very good place to start. Well, it happened in a place called Caesarea. And in Caesarea, there was a man called Cornelius. And Cornelius, the Bible says, was a God-fearing man. That means he knew about God and he had learned about God and he helped the people, the Jewish people in Caesarea by helping their church. He gave them money and he supported them. But, you know, he wasn't allowed to be in their church. And the reason for that was because Cornelius was what they called in those days a Gentile and the Jews their laws, do you remember we talked about laws last week? No, their laws wouldn't let them mix with Gentiles. They kept very separate from them. And to be honest, they thought that their message from God was very special and it was just for them. It wasn't for everybody else. And Peter, who had been a follower of Jesus, as far as he knew, his message was maybe just for Jewish people all over the world. And so when 
Peter had got the message about all that food being brought down on a sort of big napkin thing, it was like a code. And he didn't really understand exactly what the message was God had for him. But when he was on his way to Joppa, that code was in his head. But getting back to Cornelius, Cornelius had been praying for a long time. He'd been praying to God and all of his family and household, they were also followers of God. They were very God-fearing, it said. And one day, in fact, Cornelius was very specific about exactly when it was. He said it was about three o'clock in the afternoon. Someone shining white stood in front of him. Well, you can imagine Cornelius was like, oh. And the shining white figure said, Cornelius, your prayers have been heard. God has been listening to you. It's funny that, isn't it? God's always listening to you. Cornelius was about to find out exactly that, that God was always listening to him. So the shining white figure said, you must go and find a man called, mm -hmm, we know, don't we, Peter. And you'll find him in the house of Simon the Tanner in Joppa. You see, there was no code or not understanding that message. The shining white figure was very, very clear. He said, you must send for him. So that's what Cornelius did got two of his household servants and a friend who he knew he could trust and he sent them all the way to Joppa. And that's where we got the story last week. Those three men were in Simon the Tanner's house waiting for Peter when he came downstairs from having got his coded message. And so Simon the Tanner said goodbye to Peter and Peter went off with the three men all the way to Caesarea. And when he got to Cornelius' house, Cornelius, who was a Roman soldier and really quite well to do, got down on his knees before Peter because he knew that Peter was a messenger from God. But Peter said, no, 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 get up. I'm just a man just like you. Don't do that. I'm not special. You're not special. And so Cornelius told him all about the fact that he believed in God and he wanted Peter to tell him more. He needed to know about Jesus. So there and then, Peter began to tell him the whole story of Jesus. He told him all about what had happened to him, about who he was, about how he was a special gift, the only son of God. And while Peter was talking to Cornelius, the Holy Spirit came into that place. Now, again, you might remember a story about when Peter was in a room and all the disciples were a bit scared and they were locked in a room. And the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit came on each of them. Do you remember? It was a little flame on their heads and the wind blowing through. Well, that happened in Cornelius's house. Wow, Peter was amazed. And the other Jewish people who had come round, because you know what people are like, they're always a bit nosy, and they had come to see what Peter was doing in Cornelius's house. And when they saw that, can you imagine what they were thinking? And Peter turned to them all and Cornelius and said, look, this is a sign that everybody is equal in the eyes of God. Everybody is loved just as much as one another by God. There's nobody more special. There's nobody less special. God has a special place in his heart for every single one of us. And this is a sign. You all say that we shouldn't mix. Jewish people and Gentile people shouldn't mix. But look at this. God thinks that we should mix. And now I understand what that message, the coded message on the top of the roof was all about. It was about the things that anything that God has made are special. They're all special in their own way and they're all loved just the same by God. So we mustn't make people have to be separate and we mustn't make our church into a kind of clique that says, oh no, you can't join and you can't join. Cornelius, you can be part of our new church and you can be a follower of Jesus too because you've been praying and you have the Holy Spirit right in your heart now. And since the Holy Spirit is in your heart, there's not a soul round here 
who's going to say that you can't be baptised? Would you like to be baptised, Cornelius? Oh, yes, said Cornelius, and all my household. And there and then, Peter baptised Cornelius and the household. And what's more, Peter stayed and ate with Cornelius and stayed in his house for three more days. And that was a huge, huge change for the new church. And Peter had decoded his message from God and had understood exactly what was important. Loving everybody and getting the message of Jesus' love is more important than anything else. Let's pray about that, shall we? Let's close our eyes. Heavenly Father, thank you so much that you have a place in your heart for each one of us. A special place for each one of us, but not one of us is more special to you than the other. We're all special and we're all loved. Thank you, Lord, that you love all of us. Amen. See you next week. Bye.